today we will discuss about basic architecture of Splunk. So, what Splunk actually is? Splunk is a big data tool as like other big data tools it can it can basically parse and give you insight on the raw data you have. The data could be in any format like from database servers or logs from a custom app, logs from network switches, servers, mobile devices, web services. Any text data is good for Splunk. It has also capability of breaking that data into events. Events you can think of as like rows in the database tables and then it stores the data into the index. Index you can think of as a table in the relational database format and then it has capabilities of searching and, and run searches on those indexes and build good reports visualizations on the data. And for that Splunk defined SPL search processing language. So, these are the four, four basic capabilities of Splunk. Apart from that Splunk also have capabilities of authenticating users as well which I will discuss in more detail in my next videos. So, based on those capabilities Splunk architectural component can be divided into three basic parts here. One is forwarder, one is indexer and another is search head. Forwarders are the component which basically takes or collects the data from different different servers and send it to Splunk for indexing purpose. Indexer gets the data from forwarder and then parse it break breaking into lot of events based on the data and then index it to Splunk. Before indexing the data goes through a license meter. As you may be aware that Splunk has a licensing concept that means it defines a daily data volume limit you can index into Splunk. So, it is very important when before the data getting index is passed to the license meter to check whether you are, whether you are um, exceeding your license or not. Then the search it comes which basically help us to run searches on the index and then create the visualizations. And now during indexing phase it could be uh, required that you need to apply some kind of transformation to the data maybe uh, masking some sensitive information something like that it, that can be done as well over here during indexing phase. Let us move on um, this is a very basic forwarder architecture looks like. So, forwarders are generally installed in the web servers or other places where your data resides. Forwarder will take those data and send it to the indexer as a raw data format. And then this is how a basic indexer architecture looks like. It gives the data from forwarder, parse it, breaks it into event, check for the licenses and then index into the Splunk index. And this is how a typical search head architecture looks like where it runs different searches on the in different indexers and then give you the search result and then based on that you can create your own visualization or use Splunk visualization to visualize the data. During searching it could be using lot of knowledge objects as well. Mm, knowledge objects I will be discussing in detail in my next videos. Okay. Now, this is a typical standalone deployment of Splunk and Splunk is very scalable as well that means you can have the same architecture in distributed environment as well. This is how a typical distributed architecture looks like where you have lot of forwarders installed in different different servers which are sending data to a, a set of indexers which are basically parsing those data and indexing the data and then there are couple of search heads installed in, in your Splunk as well which are basically running searches on different different indexers. This is how a typical distributed environment looks like. There is one component called deployment server here which I will discuss more detail 
later, but the basic feature about deployment server is your all app level configurations and codes are maintained in one place. So, that you make changes in one place and that will be that changes will be uh, affected or replicated to different different and environments based on the configurations of the deployment server. So, when you when you install Splunk from the or download Splunk from the Splunk website, it has two different softwares you will get one is Splunk enterprise software, another is Splunk universal forwarder software. Universal forwarder softwares are very lightweight in nature, you do not have any UI, you just install there in the server and then configure it from the back end. And for Splunk enterprise software by default it comes with lot of components here if you see like indexers, search aid, deployment server, license master, heavy forwarders and master node. So, heavy forwarder is one of the component of the Splunk which basically comes before the indexer where it has the capability of parsing the data, parsing the data as well and you will get more fine control on the parsing through heavy forwarders. Okay. So, if I show you my local Splunk installation here, so this is downloaded from the Splunk website and as I said here, it has this component installed by default. So, when you index some data through settings add data, add data by default indexer comes into picture and when you search some data, let me show you here as well. So, this is called search prompt of the search head. So, here the search head component comes into picture which basically allows you to run any searches. Suppose, I am searching my main index for all time. Now, see each and every line is called an event. Events are basically um, let us say you have a log file, server log file and there are a lot of logs are getting generated each and every time. Uh, one of the logs could be the server went down and the time associated with it. So, in Splunk this time is very much important. So, if you have time with your in with your events, it states that when that event basically occurred. So, okay. so, so I, I as we as we discuss here, so we discuss very much basic components of Splunk and I show you over here as well. Um, when you index data, when you search data, which component comes into picture. In my next videos, I will show you how to different how different components are interconnected and how we can use different components effectively in your Splunk deployment. See you in next video.